Welcome to Flames of Revival. This is Shelby Vaughn. I'm so glad you tuned in. Uh, I want to teach you some things today as far as the Word of God is concerned because the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And so um, I think that today I want to talk to you as far as what's happening on the inside. So let me, let me do it like this. Uh, let the Word of God work in you. Let the Word of God work in you. Okay, um, I remember uh, when I first got saved. Now, some of you know and some of you don't. I didn't get saved till I was 19 years old, all right? And I was in church all my life, but I didn't know how to get, I didn't know how to do it. So the word couldn't work in me because I had never been told that word. And so, so let, me, let me say this and then I'll come back. See, the Bible says, how can they hear without a preacher? And how can he preach unless he's sent? And faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so you can't believe it unless you hear it. Do you understand? You can't believe it unless you hear it. And so I didn't know nothing about uh, being, I didn't know nothing about getting saved. I didn't know nothing about being filled with the Holy Ghost. I didn't know nothing about speaking in tongues. And what I did know the people where I grew up, either they didn't know, but more than that, they were not just not knowing. They were against what, what, what I was taught, okay? Uh, again, went Sister Wilborn, a woman missionary, but a woman preacher and a woman pathway. They didn't, they didn't believe in that, but it didn't matter to me because I'm the one needed to help, you understand? In fact, you know, you, know, you need to stay tuned in because I got some stuff I'm going to teach. I gotta, I'm preparing some stuff for later. Uh, one of the subjects I want to deal with is hell. You don't hear much about hell, but I'm going to walk this thing out, and I'm going to show you what the Bible says about hell, all right, and what hell means, and is there a real hell with fire? Because there is a real hell with fire. But there's another word, uh, hell means the, the departed. You under, and anyway, when it's time, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to teach on that. I'm going to teach on speaking in tongues. Got it? I'm going to teach on women. Can they preach? Can they teach? What's the place in the church? You got prosperity. Uh, do, are we supposed to give? How much are we supposed to? Is the preacher right? Is tithing under the law, before the law, after the law? Is it a, applicable to us right now? Okay. A woman, I thought she's supposed to keep silent in the church. Speaking in tongues. See, I don't know nothing about that. I don't even know what I'm saying. What's the purpose of speaking in tongues? Why do we do that? Okay. Well, you need to stay tuned because I'm going to explain a lot of stuff. But just for the record, I speak in tongues. A bunch. A whole lot. All the time. Every day. That's what I do. And so I'm going to explain to you why. And I'm going to just walk you, I'm gonna walk you through the scripture. And I'm, you know what? I'm also, uh, man, I'm going to teach you about a vow. What, what is a vow? What does that mean? The Bible talks about making a vow. And the Bible says, you know, if you make a vow, pay it. Got it? So I'm going to teach the principle of making a vow and paying it because, and I'm going to explain to you why. And I'm explaining to you that it's okay to make a vow. And you can make a vow when you don't have nothing. But I'm going to go from the scripture. You, gotta, you understand? Because it's in the Bible. All right? So these are kind of the subjects I'm getting ready for you and all. So I'm working on it right now. So uh, that's going to be interesting. I can tell you that. It's going to be interesting. Okay. So let me get back to what I was saying about letting the word work in you. Now, I've said, and I've told you before, and, and, and that I didn't know how to get saved. Nobody had ever said to me these words till I was 19. What you need to do to get to heaven, to get your names written in the Lamb Book of Life, you need to ask God to forgive you for your sin and come in your heart and change your life. I had never heard those words. I heard he died, he died, he died. I heard that. Well, and I knew he died, and he got up. I knew that, believe that. But I didn't know how to get what was already mine. And so what the devil is trying to block you from was to get what's already yours. Now, a lot of you, you know I went to college at Kilgore. That's one of the colleges I've been to five. But one of them I went to was in Kilgore, Texas. And uh, I didn't have no car, you know what I'm saying, when I was at Kilgore. And after I left the other church and went to where Sister Wilborn was, it was three miles away from the college campus. And every Sunday, she didn't have no car because she didn't learn how to drive till she was 59. 
You understand? She had never had a car and didn't know how to drive it. She got a car, first car when she was almost 60, and she learned how to drive when she was 60 years old. And never driven, you know, because she's from New York. They rode the bus. Ain't the drive for what? You understand? Okay. But I used to, the word was working in me. Once I went over there and visited, you know, because I caught a ride with some guys one night who had got saved. Once I went over there and I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, then the word of God was working in me. There was something going on on the inside. I couldn't get enough of the scriptures because it was like life to me. It was life in my spirit. It was life. I was receiving life. It was life. You understand? And so I'm spending time in the Word, and I couldn't get enough. And then she was making it so plain, and then I was following her along. Yep, Bible say that. Yep, that's in the Scripture. Yep, that's true. And so I used to walk. Now, understand, she was three miles away from the college campus. She had church Sunday morning and Sunday night. So Sunday morning, I would get up early, and I was on time. And I would walk three miles for the Sunday morning service. Then I would walk back instead of hanging around over there all day. And then Sunday night, I would leave early enough Sunday evening to walk back three miles. And then at night in the dark when church was out, I would walk back. You know, you understand what I'm saying? And I'm telling you, I walked 12 miles a Sunday when I was in college to go to church. So you do understand I was not playing. You understand I was exercising because I used to be a runner, you know, I used to do stuff. But anyway, I was, I was, uh, I was having a ball, you understand? It's, to me, I was exercising. And I'm thinking, man, I wonder what she's going to teach about tonight. And so she started teaching about fasting and praying and being sanctified. You know what I mean? And it wasn't closed. It was, a, it was a where you separated under God and you put yourself in a holy position where God could communicate you on a level that he couldn't before you got committed to him. So sanctified had a no, whole nother meaning to me. It wasn't just certain church I belonged to and all of that. You know, and women wearing the long dresses and don't fix your hair and no nails and no, it wasn't none of that. You know, we didn't, it wasn't that. But it was more of a condition of sanctified means set apart for God. And so I decided I'm going to be set apart for God. So I couldn't do all kind of stuff. And even now, you know, there's some things that's probably lawful for me to do, but I don't want to. Y'all y- understand what I'm saying? It ain't because I can't. I don't want to because I found out that when, when you start spending time with God, there's a weight of glory. That's, that's what I call it. And there's times when I'm praying and seeking God till his glory descends on me. And some of you, 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 you know it because God been, he, he, he's been coming. You start crying for nothing. You start feeling like somebody's in the room. You know what I'm talking about. Somebody come in your car. Somebody come on a job with you. You know what I mean? You eat, you eat breakfast. feel like somebody comes sit down. You understand? And so what you start doing, and, and I'm just telling you this ahead of time. I'm going to teach you on the glory too. But what you start doing when that starts to happen is you start to spend time worshiping God and praising him. Sometimes it's for three or four minutes. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's for 30 minutes or whatever. Just spend time giving God the glory, welcoming his glory. Okay? But there's a certain weight that comes with this glory. Uh, there are times when I pray for the sick. It feels like somebody has an electrified overcoat made out of paper, and they drop it on me. Got it? And then sometimes there's this force of life that comes on me. It's hard to stand up, and it's hard to function, and sometimes it's hard to see because it's so foggy. And you understand what I'm saying? And sometimes it's, it's hard to move, and, and sometimes it's hard to talk. There, there have been moments that I had way back in the day where I couldn't hardly talk. There would be times when I just... God was put his hands on me, and I was having this experience, and I couldn't talk to nobody. I wasn't made up. I wasn't trying to be deep. I just couldn't talk. Sometimes 20 minutes, sometimes an hour, and I just have to sit there until it lifts. And it, but see, here's the deal. When the glory comes down on you, that's the time to listen because now you're in a receiving position. When the open heaven, when heaven is open over you, and you're in a receiving position, and in that position you can know stuff but God can heal you, and God can do anything, and God can change your circumstance, and God can give you what to do to help other people in that atmosphere of glory. And that's really what you want. See, here's what happens. A lot of times, we're so used to music and shouting and running and all that, and ain't nothing wrong with none of that. I like it. God knows I like it. I like to see people praising God. I like to see, but there are times, there are times when you need to get into worship 
and let the weight of God's glory come on you. You understand? Because what happens when that glory comes on, then you are strengthened. Okay? There's an anointing that comes on you, and all of a sudden you'll start knowing stuff. You'll just know stuff. You will know stuff. Do you understand? You will know. So I need to let the word work in me. Now, here's the deal. The reason I'm, I'm, I'm doing this subject is you need to let God's word be so strong on the inside of you until you start recognize when he's talking to you about whatever he's talking to you about. Do you understand? And then you'll start getting experiences with God, and you'll love it. You'll love it. It's, 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 I can't even tell you how wonderful it is for God to tell you something, and right after he tell you, then you hear the same thing, or you already know what's coming, or you go up and you tell people what's wrong with them, and you pray for them, or you speak, or God told me to tell you this and that, or you go give them an answer, and they don't even know you. <laughs> Ah, glory. You need to let, get, get to know God on that level. Because even if you're the, not for public ministry, God can tell you stuff for you personally, for you, for your family, for your kids. Let them know which direction to go in and all of that. You understand? And what will happen is you'll start, you'll, you'll start getting some credibility, and then people will trust you. I'll tell you what, so far, it's nobody that I've ever prophesied to for real and told them what God said. They don't doubt what I say now. Do you understand? There's some that don't know me and all of that. I ain't talking about that, but I'm talking about the ones that know, that know I don't know their business, and God tell me to tell them something, or this is what's going to happen, or this is what's going on, and he's going to fix that, and this is what's going to happen, and she's going to be healed on this day, and it's going to happen, and you're going to get this, and it's going to switch, and it's going to happen. It's wonderful. You understand? And I always give God the glory, because most time I tell people, I don't know what I'm talking about, <laughs> and I don't. I just, I, all I do is I hear and I speak, but that's because the word of God is working in me. Remember I told you I'm on a team? So if you start thinking like a team player, you understand? You ought to be a team player with your pastor in church. You already know that. But before that, you ain't good as you can be unless you're a team player with Father, Son, and Holy Ghost first. Then you, you can be on the team. You understand? So you'd be on the real team, and then you'd be on the, on the sub team under the real team, and now you good to minister life to other people. It's wonderful to be able to lay hands on somebody and they get healed. It's wonderful to go in a situation where everybody is afraid and you go there and you tell them what God said and you tell them when they're getting out and you tell them when they're getting up and you telling them. You understand what I'm saying? You can't, you can't buy that. You can't buy that. You understand? Now, and here's another thing just for the record, just in case there's some pastors watching preachers. Just because people get healed don't mean they're going to join your church. Just because you prophesy to them don't mean they're going to be a part of your ministry. And sometimes they're not supposed to be. So it ain't no big deal. You belong to God. God wants to show the goodness of God through your life to somebody else. Once you do that, that's your assignment. But if you think, I had a woman raised from the dead on a Sunday morning. It don't matter if people believe it. That's what happened. And uh, she's walking around now. She won't come to my church. You understand what I'm saying? There's people that, that my cousin had son had a deaf ear when he was a little boy, and he, you know, God told me what to do and pray for him, and his ear opened up, and he grew up, grown man. He probably 40s now, you know, almost 50, and all of that. All in his 40s, and, uh, you know, he ain't never been to my church. There was a lady that uh, her child couldn't talk, you understand, and, and she, she, something was wrong with her. She just couldn't talk, and I was having a revival on a Tuesday night, and they brought her. And uh, I would say, what's wrong with her? She was sitting over to the left, and they told me what was wrong. I said, okay. I said, well, you know, I can't hear nobody, but God can. And so I'm listening to the word work in me. I'm working with the Holy Spirit. And then I told her, I said, bring her right here. And so they brought her up there, and I looked at her, and I talked to her, and she was smiling. I put my hands on her jaw, and I commanded that her tongue to be loosed and all. I said, now, you're going to talk. Do you understand? So she smiled and did like that. And then I think it was the next day, that weekend, that Sunday, when they came to church, she was talking, you know. And she, everybody was amazed, like, what happened to her? Who is that in there? No, that's not in there. What, what? And I don't want to, you know, use a nickname or whatever because, you know, I don't know if a parent might not want me to say nothing, so I don't have nothing to say. But they know what happened, and she's talking to this day. You understand? And so I tell people, I, I'm just a human like you, but I'm available to God. And if you start getting available to God, he'll use you too. 
You understand what I'm saying? He said, these signs will follow them that believe. Not just follow along, but the ones that believe. So God want to use you. And, and so you need to let the word work in you. You remember, you, you need to hear the word till you hear God. You need to let that word work on the inside of you. Okay? Now, now uh, I've been talking about the invisible, but I've been talking about letting the word work. So the word works invisibly on the inside of you. And so you start speaking in agreement with what heaven tells you through the word or what the spirit tells you himself. And so God will tell you what to say. See, when I prophesy to people, God says, say this like this. And so I'll say exactly what he said, like he said, say it. And he says that the person who you talking to, they will understand what that means because it's for them. Nobody else may not understand, but the one, if you say it like I tell you to say it and you tell it, then they'll know. And that's what's been happening. And it's wonderful. And then I go home and I'm in all too because I don't have nothing to do with it. You understand what I'm trying to say? I don't have nothing to do with this. I just hear God. And I do. So, so I allow God to work in my heart because I want him to. I, and if you want this, it'll work for you too. God and no respect of person. God will use everybody saved and filled with the spirit. Everybody. But you got to want it. You understand? You got to want it. And then you got to handle people like God tell you to handle them. And you got to do what God tell you to do. And you got to do it the way God tell you to do it. So that word is working on the inside of you. Sometimes you'll be concerned about stuff and God will say, don't concern yourself with that. You need to pay attention to that word and let it work in you. Okay? God will say, you're going to get laid off on this day, but you're going to be hired here 10 days later. And I'm telling you stuff that he told me. And it happened just like he said. He said, so don't you worry about that. Okay? I got it. And so it's not because I'm smart. Not because I study so long and I know a lot of stuff. You know, I study to get faith in my heart to where I trust God's word. And then I know God agrees with his own word. See, so when I hear this voice and it's sounding just like scripture, then I already know that God put in my mind what he's trying to tell me. You know, in Genesis 2, uh, and you already know this, but Genesis 2, I think it's 19 and 20. Uh, oh, let me correct something. I, I think a few weeks ago, whenever it was, I was saying that, you know, if you look at Ezekiel 30, uh, 1 through 7, but it was Ezekiel 36, I think it was, 1 through 7, and it was talking about, um, uh, I mean, Exodus. 36, one, Exodus, not Ezekiel, Exodus, instead of 30, I think it was 36, 1 through 7, where God will put the gifts in you and he'll do that. Okay, and the reason I thought about that was I was reading, uh, the, I was studying the Bible in Genesis, and you need to always go to Genesis and learn some stuff and learn how God worked. Well, the Bible says that God made the beast and all out of the dirt and stuff, and he brought them to Adam, and God said, Adam, whatever you call it, that's what I call it. So I got to thinking about that, you know, and then I was reading about explanations about it and all. And here's the real answer. Okay, how did Adam, who never went to school, who was, never became a reader and all, whatever, who grew up like that, how did, he, how did he know what to call stuff? Stuff he ain't never seen. Well, you got to understand, Adam was clean and holy because God made him. So whatever was in God was in Adam. So the reason God called it what Adam called it is this what I think, is because Adam had the mind of God in his mind, and when he opened his mouth, he said what God had already thought. So God, to me, God thought it into Adam's mind, and when Adam said it, he got it from God himself. So God agreed and said, whatever you call it, that's what I call it. So to me, it's like Adam had already heard God say, this is a giraffe, and this is an elephant, and this is that. Because it wasn't no sin, he had a pure, clear mind and God transfers words sometimes, a lot of times through thoughts. You won't hear him. Sometimes you'll hear him, you know, even audibly. But sometimes God goes from thought to thought. And you just know what to do. Thought to thought. Thought to thought. Thought to thought. So if you'll start spending time in the word and just, you know, sometimes not even trying to read the whole Bible. You know, sometimes read two scriptures and just think about them all. What does that mean? What is God talking about? How to, and, and see how God dealt with other men. And then you'll start getting some clarity on when God is talking. I, I, I think I told this before, and I'll tell it again. I might not have told it to you, but I told it to somebody. I was at a Benny Hinn meeting in Fort Worth, and then God spoke to me, and he said, I want you to go to that middle table because that's, you know, I'm partnered with him and you know, stuff, with him and other preachers. And God said, and they would feed you on certain days when you do the two-day or three-day deal. So we were about to eat, and they said, God said, go over there and sit down 
at the middle table with that couple right there, and I'm going to tell you what to say. I said, okay. So there's people everywhere I went and sat down. I don't know these people. And so God said, while I'm sitting there, he said, ask the husband about the stock market. I said, okay. I said, hey, man, what you think about the stock market? He said, oh, man, I'm just learning, getting into it, all of that, you know, so and so and so. I said, okay. He said, what you think about it? So we're just talking, you know. And so I said, okay, Lord, I did that. And so, you know, his wife was kind of like, okay, I don't know who this guy is, you know. I wonder what he want, you know what I mean, and all of that. Because I could just tell, you know. And so, but he was listening to what I was saying. We just talking. I said, man, you know, God is amazing, and he can show you stuff ahead of time. And I, God was telling me to tell him this, you know, same thing I'm telling you. If you get enough word in you, when you hear something that's against the word, your spirit will reject it. You understand? And you will know it's something not right about what they said. You don't have to argue with them or even say it. But you won't agree with nothing that's not pure and straight. You understand? And so we were just kind of talking. And so uh, God said, I want you to say what I'm going to tell you to say. You know? And so first of all, he's believing me for some property next to a certain freeway in Fort Worth, whatever, whatever. Tell him he's going to get it. So I said, man, God is showing me you know, that you and your wife leaving for this land, you know, the church and all. And he was shocked, you know. Yeah, man, yeah. Because I don't know what free I was talking about. I don't know where I said. I don't know what I was talking about. I was saying what I heard. And he said, yeah. So now his wife started to believe what I'm saying. I said, here's how you're going to know. And God said, tell him, this is how, you, this is how he's going to know that I sent you over there to speak to them. I said, so I told him that. I said, okay, Lord, what you want me to tell him? He said, I want you to tell him that Benny Hinn is going to come out on the, on the platform and he's going to say these words. You know, today I want to talk about something I don't talk about. I want to talk about the Holy Ghost fire. I hardly never talk about that on TV, but just for a few minutes, I want to talk to you about the fire of God, and I want you to understand that it's real fire. It's not just where you fire it up, but it's a real holy fire that comes in the atmosphere. I say it, and you tell him that, and then after you tell him that, I want you to get up and leave. I said, okay. He said, but don't leave. Get up and go to the back of the room, and I want you to watch what happens. So I told him that, you know. So he was saying, really? I said, yeah, this is what he's going to say. So, you know, his wife kind of looked all up at the ceiling. And all. She was trying to be cordial and all that. But you could tell she didn't believe nothing. I said, not that. And so he said, okay. I said, yeah, you will see. I said, if it don't happen, God didn't tell me. So I walked to the back, and I was standing there. God said, I don't want you to leave. I want you to wait so you know that you heard me, then you can leave. He said, I don't want you to let them know that, you know, I don't want you to contact, I don't want you to talk with them no more. I just needed you to say that to them, and I want you to leave. He said, because they're going to be looking for you the moment this happens. I said, okay. So they was playing the music. Here come Benny Hinn. He came across the thing. He said, you know, today, before I talk, I want to talk to you about the Holy Ghost fire. God is putting me just for a few minutes to talk about the fire because there's real fire. So he said exactly what I said he was going to say. And the guy jumped up, and, he started, and his wife jumped up, and then he started turning around, and they was looking for me. I'm looking right at him. I know they're looking for me because I just told them that was going to happen, and 20 minutes later, it was happening at another man's meeting. You understand? So they jumped up, and they were looking around and trying to find me, and I looked at them, and God said, well, first of all, I want them to know that I use anybody I want, and secondly, I want you to be confident that when I tell you to do something, whether you heard, whether you understand or not, if you will instantly obey my spirit because my word is burning in your heart and you're in agreement with my word, and this is how you're going to start knowing my voice better and better, he said, so I wanted you to know. Because if you had left, you wouldn't know whether you heard me or not. But this is proven to them, and this is proven to you. So I did that, and then I left. You understand? So what happened? How did that happen? All I know is my heart got quiet. Got it? My heart got quiet, and I just sitting there. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit came, and he started whispering in my ear. You know, there's a scripture that says, and you'll hear a voice behind you. And it'll say, don't turn to the right, or don't turn to the left. Go this way. And so you have to, as a believer with power, you need to practice the presence of God. Hallelujah. You understand? Sometimes you need to get away from everybody. You need to spend moments every day with the Lord. And you need to listen to what he's telling you. Because God wants you to be in your wealthy place. God, not, God wants you to prosper. Do you understand? God wants you to have, I, th I think, this is me. God wants you to have millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. You understand? 
But God got to get you ready first. Now, and people ask me, do you have millions yet? Well, I've been promised millions by people who got millions or who about to get millions. You know what I mean? So sooner or later, somebody going to come bless a brother. And if that's you, you know my address. But anyway, <laughs> anyway uh, I, I believe that, one, but, but, but see, here was my deal. I said, God, I want to know all the principles because I don't want to lose no money, and I'm not. I said, but I would rather get it later, and I just, I, I want you. I want the power. I want the, the gates of heaven to be open over me. You know what I mean? I want to know the supernatural. I want to walk in that first. I want to learn how to be proficient in listening to the Holy Ghost and walking in the anointing and, and, and letting the glory show up wherever I go. I said, I want all that to start happening first so I'll know what I'm doing. I said, and then you can start. Then, then I'll be ready to receive. See, God will do it like you want it to. Got it? And then a lot of brothers, they've been with me when another, other guys prophesied to me and spoke and said what God was going to do and how much he was going to give and what he was going to do. And these brothers can vouch for what I'm saying. So I'm not worried about the money right now. You know what I mean? It's coming. It's coming now. God working on some stuff as we speak. I ain't worried about that. You understand? But I want to know him. Got it? See, I know I'm going to heaven. You know, if and then, I'm going to heaven when I die, but I, I'm not dying today. And I think our children need to know how to walk in the supernatural. And I think men and women of God ought to make walking with God and his power and answer prayer so powerful until the kids want it. Because that's what's going to keep the revival going. That's what's going to keep the church going. Because if all the children die and these gifts are not imparted to them and, and, and they don't have a desire for it because God can't go past you unless you let him, you understand? Then all of a sudden, what should be happening in the world is not going to happen. And then a lot of times God want to use your children. You need to introduce them to the anointing. You need to let them know God got a plan for you. You're going to work in this church. You're going to run it. You're anointed. You're a prophet. You can lay hands on the sick. Teach them how to lay hands on the sick. Teach them how to cast out devils. Teach them the importance of giving and prosperity and speaking in tongues. Teach them how not to be in strife and stress. And how You understand what I'm saying? Teach them the whole counsel of God. And then we still got a whole group of church people coming up to keep the church flowing like it's supposed to. Walking in power. Do you understand that we are headed to one of the greatest revivals that the world has ever seen? And I'm not just talking about in Houston and, and, and in Beaumont. And I'm talking about all over the world. There are some people out there praying and they fasting and they seeking God. And I am telling you right now, I'm talking about major stuff. I'm talking about God. See, see we, we right here right now. And if you want to be one of them, you need to let the Lord know, I want to be one of them. You, you understand? Lord, I, want, I really want to be one of them. I really want to be one of them. And if you want to be one of them, God will make you one of them. You understand what I'm saying? So I trust that this, ah, this is helping you get close to God, fall in love with him more and more and more. Because God really does want to work through your life, and he wants you to be a blessing to other people. Okay? So you keep tuning in. I got a lot of stuff I want to share with you, and uh, I think it's going to be good for your life. Okay? And this is my assignment. That's what I'm supposed to do. Teach, preach, and heal. Excite them, ignite them, and encourage them with my word. That's what God told me to do, and that's what I endeavor to do, okay? So, I thank you so much for tuning in, and uh, you need to tune in again because I got a lot more to say. This is Shelby Vaughn from Anahuac, Texas. Remember, you got what it takes? Yeah, you do, and it takes what you've got to change the whole world. God bless you. I'm going to see you next time on the air.